This is any man reminding you that you have the power. To help you use that power better, today we'll be taking a look at a manuscript called Shonin Ki. It was originally published in Japanese in the 17th century by Natori Masazumi and has been translated by several translators over the years. As it is a book with little interest to the general public, few people know about it, but the interest is growing and the material is useful. So I figured I would share it with you. The copy that I possess is not the best translation, but it is still a useful one. There are other translations alleged to be better by uh, the historical ninjutsu research team, headed by Anthony Cummins, but actually translated by Yoshie Minami. And there is a better translation by Don Rowley, a Bujin Khan instructor from Colorado Springs. The version I have is called is entitled Shoninki, The Secret Traditions of the Ninja, the 17th century manual on the art of concealment by Master Natori Masazumi with comments with commentaries by Axel Mazue, translated by John E. Graham. Copyright, the original copyright and translation from Japanese to French was in 2009 by Edition Albin Michel. The English translation done by John E. Graham from the French to the English is copyright 2010 by Inner Traditions International. I'm going to be reading through the foreword, the introduction, and part one. Shonen Kijo, introduction to the Shonen Ki. After which there will be five other parts. Forward. The Shonen Ki is the essential reference work of ninjutsu. In feudal Japan, it was even used as a sign of recognition between shinobi or ninja. This is why any person practicing ninjutsu or having any interest in the subject at all should own a copy of this book and refer to it regularly. Not only does this version provide the most trustworthy reference on ninjutsu now available outside of Japan, but it also stands out as the keystone for any library devoted to the martial arts. Beyond that, this book deserves a place of choice in the libraries of all those interested in ancient Japan. This text by the master ninja of the Kishu school, Natori Masazumi, is his masterpiece, offering readers an unprecedented view of 17th century Japan as seen by one of its essential figures. More than just a practical manual, this book offers testimony from a remote past, from a time in a land where the slightest mistake could mean death. It is like an ancestor to whom we owe the greatest respect, along with the Nin Piden, the Bansen Shukai, and the Nin Po Hikan, it is the progenitor of all books on traditional ninjutsu. The Shonin Ki advocates detachment, self-esteem, and letting go. As a psychotherapist, I cannot help but give my blessing to this undertaking. What's more, it encourages self-knowledge and trust in our own intuition, which meshes perfectly with my own concerns as a Zen practitioner. The modern reader may not know what good fortune it is that we can hold this book in our hands. After remaining a closely guarded secret for a long time, even in Japan, this ninja Bible has crossed over ages and continents to make its way to us and surrender its age-old secrets. More importantly, its appearance in the Western world should cast a light that will banish to the shadows a good many mediocre books on the subject, written by authors enslaved to sensationalism. May this book, dear readers, find in your heart the powerful light, the Daikomyo, and rekindle it for greater happiness and success in your lives. 
Bernard Bordas Bujinkan Shihan, or coach. Bernard Bordas was born in 1957 and started to practice the martial arts and combat sports at age 11. He is the recipient of the title Shihan, Master Expert in Japanese Martial Arts, from the Bujinkan Organization, a prestigious martial arts school, particularly of ninjutsu, founded and directed by Ma Master Masaki Hatsumi. Bordas has developed has devoted his life to the practice of ninjutsu which he states is not only a technique but also a state of mind survival introduction the cultural and philosophical context of the shonen ki in feudal japan the ninja were agents employed to perform espionage and guerrilla missions the shonen ki which translates into english as authentic ninja tradition is the work of Natori Masazumi, the master ninja who directed the Kishu school or Kishiryu, of one of the principal ninja clans in 17th century Japan. For this reason, this short treatise is one of the most important documents on ninjutsu or ninja practices. It makes it clear that far from being restricted to a purely physical teaching, the ninjutsu practice was accompanied by a foundational teaching that was philosophical, even esoteric in nature, which moves it beyond being simply a set of techniques. <clears throat> it is my intention to provide in this introduction a few of the factors that make it possible to comprehend the doctrines on which the Shoninkyu is based, as well as its historical and cultural background. The regions of Koga and Iga, in the area surrounding Lake Biwa, were the geographical heart of traditional ninjutsu. They are considered the birthplace of the ninpo, ninja practices, and the names of the old ninjutsu schools of Iga and Koga, Igaryu and Kogoryu, are still famous today. Today, the ancient province of Iga is part of the modern prefecture of Mie, while Koga, an administrative subdivision of the former province of Omi, is part of the modern prefecture of Shiga, the Kishuryu school, associated with the former province of Kishu located south of Iga, is sometimes regarded as a derivative branch of the Igaryu. Today, Kishu corresponds to the prefecture of Wakayama near Ki Peninsula. Geographically, all of the ancient centers connected with the ninja are located in the current region of Kansai or Kinki. The ninja had many different names bestowed upon them in different regions and at different times. The generic term of mawashi mono or kanshono mono, derived from the verb mawasu, to circle around, and sagri no mono from the verb sagru, to look for, spy, probe, were used to des designate spies. The term ninja or shinobi, which is a different reading of the same ideograms, was used only in some provinces. In Kyoto or Nara, they were called Supa or Sepa, Ukami, Dako, Shinobi or Shinobu. Aurimi, they were called Hayamchimono, Shinobi or Shinobu. In Miyagi, they were called Kurohabaki. In Kanagawa, they were called Kusa, Kamari, Monomi, Rapa, and Topa. In Tokyo or Edo, they were called Onmitsu and Oniwaban. In Yamanashi, they were called Mitsumono, Supa or Sepa, Sukinami, and Denuki. In Aichi, they were called Kyodan. In Fukui, they were called Shinobi or Shinobu. In Niigata, they were called Nokizura. Kyodo, Kyodan, Kikimono Yaku, Kanshi, or Kansha. In Shiga or Koga, they were called Senkunin, Senkunomono, Kokanomono, Kokashu, on, or Ongyonomona. In Mie, in Iga, they were called Iganomono, Igashu, or Shinobinomono. In Okayama, they were called Fuma Kaine. In Yamashiro and Yamato, they were called Supa, Dako, 
Ukami or Ukagami. In Kai they were called Supa, Mitsu or Mitsunomono. In Echigo and Echu they were called Nokizaru, Kanshi and Kikimono Yaku. In Mutsu or Miyagi they were called Kurohabaki. In Mutsu in the region of Aomori they were called Hayamichi Nomono or Shinobi. In Sagami they were called Kusa, Monomi or Rapa. And in Echizen and Wakasa they were called Shinobi. Use of the term ninja is relatively modern and as it was made popular during the early 1900s. Before this time, the most commonly used name was Shinobi or Shinobi no Mono, which means furtive individual. Shinobi is the word primarily used in the translation of this text. One of the reasons for this choice is that the word ninjutsu or ninja is not as easy to translate as it might appear at first glance. There's little difficulty with determining the right translation for jutsu, which means technique or art, or for ja, which means he who, individual, person, or man. However, the kanji, the Chinese character, nin, possesses several distinctly different levels of meaning. At the most elementary level, this word should be understood as meaning to endure, tolerate, undergo, tenacity, or endurance. In the next layer of meaning, the sense of this word becomes similar to shinobi, furtive, secret, hidden, or invisible. But if the kanji for nin is broken down, it is made up of the combination of two different ideograms. The kanji shin, or kokuro, meaning spirit or heart, in the symbolic sense of soul, courage, will, feelings, and so forth, is placed underneath the kanji yaiba, meaning blade, and more specifically the blade of the sword, the saber. Others have taken this analysis even further by breaking the kanji yaiba down into its components of ha, which means sting, combined with to, which means sword. Together they mean the sting of the sword rather than simply blade. The result has been a plethora of different interpretations for the meaning of nin, which in turn has served as a springboard for finding an equal variety of possible meanings for the word ninjutsu or ninja. By definition, ninjutsu and ninja, of course, serve as the preeminent terms for the art of invisibility and the furtive individual. As the Shoninki indicates in the third chapter of the Shonin Kijo, the ninja is also he who places his heart beneath the blade of a sword. In other words, the ninja is the individual who has to risk his life, especially during a mission. Or symbolically, the individual who lives with a sword of Damocles hanging above his head. Someone in constant danger. He must be tough to endure a situation like this, and his furtive nature will allow him to escape danger. But nin also means the will that can endure the sting of the sword, thereby making ninjutsu the way of endurance, whether this endurance is physical, mental, or moral in nature. This means knowing how to endure pain and humiliation, for example when disguised as a crippled beggar to avoid arousing suspicion, knowing how to be patient enough to remain hidden, motionless for hours, and knowing how to beat suffering, how to bear suffering such as holding the pain of an injury in the depths of your heart and hiding it from others in order to fulfill a mission. But this could also be the art of the union of the mind with the sword, or the body and the spirit. This refers to the mind's control over the body, which is the tool to express the mind's pure and flawless will with a t terrible efficiency, ready to do whatever proves necessary to achieve its objective. This indicates that ninjutsu, like all the other reputable Japanese martial arts, can be a way, or do, of ultimately seeking the perfect mind-body union. The word nin thus also refers to a tough heart a patient and tenacious will with the effectiveness of a blade. Pursuing this direction further, we can also interpret ninjutsu as meaning the art of one who knows how to use his mind like a weapon. The art of one who triumphs by virtue of his knowledge, experience, and cunning. But it could also be seen as an allusion to the strength of the will and the power of the mind as parapsychological terms. There were goals of ninja training. With respect to its esoteric aspect, ninjutsu could lastly be understood as the, heart, the art of the hidden mind, the secrets of the heart, which is to say, of hidden secret knowledge. It should be noted that some grandmasters like Master Hatsumi 
have objected to the identification of ninjutsu as a do, reserving the term instead for the practice of seated meditation or zazen. As we shall read in the first chapter of the Shonin Ki, ninja were also sometimes called nusubito, a term used to describe thieves. This was a logical attribution, as the clandestine activities of thief and ninja often intersected. However, nusubito is a contemptuous term that is quite pejorative, and the shoninki quickly takes pains to draw a clear distinction between nusubito and authentic ninja, explaining that while thieves or nusubito can technically behave like ninja to some extent, that does not make them true ninja. The Shoninki therefore establishes a clear distinction between ninja and nusubito even though their spheres of activity clearly overlapped. The Origin of Ninjutsu It is highly likely that ninjutsu's origin was in China, as explained by the second chapter of the first scroll. The Chinese were quite familiar with spies and had many different names for them as mentioned in the Shoninki. Die or Chou, Die Xie or Chou Sha, Jishuo or Saisaku, Yozhen or Yutei, Kanzhen or Kente, Jandia or Kancho, and Tansi or Tanshi. More specifically, ancient China also had a technique of equivalent to ninjutsu known under the name of Yin Senshu or Fashu. It is also said that the masters of Kung Fu Wushu martial arts had to learn Qin Kung in tandem with their training in the classic martial arts. Qin Kung is the art of making light work of obstacles in the same way as the ninja of feudal Japan, scaling a wall like a lizard, walking through the grass or even the snow without leaving any trace, and so forth. Dr. Leung Ting has written a very interesting book on the Chinese roots of Nin Po, available in English, with the title Skills of the Vagabonds, From Where the Japanese Ninjutsu Originated, Volume 1, Hong, Tong, Hong Kong Leung Ting Company, 1988. Similarly, there were several equivalents to the ninja on the far eastern continent, mainly in Korea where they were called Sulsa, or Knights of the Night, and their art was known under the name of Yun Shinbo, or Insu Yun Shinbo. At the very least, it is certain that, there, that the construction and development of Japanese ninjutsu benefited from the knowledge contributed by Chinese exiles, both on the technical plane as well as on the philosophical or strategic plane. Specifically, there are references to Sun Tzu's The Art of War and the Wuxing, techniques regarding the five elements. Types of Spies from The Art of War The Art of War, which dates back to around 500 BCE, is probably the first treatise on strategy ever written. Its influence on ninjutsu is undeniable. The Shoninki picked up the typology of the five types of Chinese spies from which the ninja originated, developed by Sun Tzu in the chapter, 13th or 12th, depending on the different editions, concerning secret agents. Anyone seeking to get a better grasp of the overall, qual uh, overall question of strategy would be well advised to accompany the reading of Sun Tzu's The Art of War with that of the 36 strategies, attributed to the same author in error by many historians. Several editions of this work are available. The Shoninki was inspired specifically by paragraphs 5 to 11. Here's the text as translated by Lionel Giles. Sun Tzu said, Raising a host of a hundred thousand men and marching them great distances entails heavy loss on the people and a drain on the resources of the state. The daily expenditure will amount to a thousand ounces of silver. There will be commotion at home and abroad, and men will drop down exhausted on the highways. As many as 700,000 families will be impeded in their labor. Hostile armies may face each other for years, striving for the victory which is decided in a single day. This being so, to remain in ignorance of the enemy's condition simply because one grudges the outlay of a hundred ounces of silver and honor and emoluments is the height of inhumanity. One who acts thus is no leader of men, no present help to his sovereign, no master of victory. Thus what enables the wise sovereign and the good general to strike and conquer and achieve things beyond the reach of ordinary men is foreknowledge.
Now this foreknowledge cannot be elicited from spirits. It cannot be obtained inductively from experience, nor by any deductive calculations. Knowledge of the enemy's dispositions can only be obtained from other men. Hence the use of spies of whom there are five classes. 1. Local spies. 2. Inward spies. 3. Converted spies. 4. Doomed spies. 5. Surviving spies. A number of varied terms exist in translation from, for these five types of spies or secret agents. For example, indigenous agents is sometimes used for local spies, interior agents or spies or infiltrated agents for inward spies, turned agents or double agents for converted spies, dead agents, spies that can be liquidated, or sacrificed agents for doomed spies, and living agents, flying agents, or reusable agents for surviving spies. When these five kinds of spy are all at work, none can discover the secret system. This is called divine manipulation of the threads. It is the sovereign's most precious faculty. Having local sp spies means employing the services of the inhabitants of a district. Having inward spies, making use of officials of the enemy. Having converted spies, getting hold of the enemy's spies and using them for our own purposes. Having doomed spies, doing certain things openly for purposes of deception and allowing our spies to know of them and report them to the enemy. Surviving spies finally are those who bring back news from the enemy's camp. Hence it is that in the whole army no more intimate relations are to be maintained than with spies. None should be more liberally rewarded, and no other business should greater secrecy be preserved. Spies cannot be used usefully employed without a certain intuitive sagacity. They cannot be properly managed without benevolence and straightforwardness. Without subtle ingenuity of mind, one cannot make certain of the truth of their reports. Be subtle, be subtle, and use your spies for every kind of business. If a secret piece of news is divulged by a spy before the time is ripe, he must be put to death together with the man to whom the secret was told. Whether the object be to crush an army, to storm a city, or to assassinate an individual, it is always necessary to begin by finding out the names of the attendants, the aides de camp, and doorkeepers and sentries of the general in command. Our spies must be commissioned to ascertain these. The enemy spies who have come to spy on us must be sought out, tempted with bribes, led away and comfortably housed. Thus they will become converted spies and available for our service. It is through the information brought by the converted spy that we are able to acquire and employ local and inward spies. It is owing to his information again that we can cause the doomed spy to carry false tidings to the enemy. Lastly, it is by his information that the surviving spy can be used on appointed occasions. The end and aim of spying in all its five varieties is knowledge of the enemy, and this knowledge can only be derived in the first instance from the converted spy. Hence it is essential that the converted spy be treated with the utmost liberality. Of old, the rise of the Yin dynasty was due to Yi Qi, who had served under the Xia. Likewise, the rise of the Chen dynasty was due to Lu Ya, who served under the Yin. Hence it is only the enlightened ruler and the wise general who will use the highest intelligence of the army for purposes of spying, and thereby they achieve great results. Spies are, more, are a most important element in war, because on them depends an army's ability to move. Sun Tzu on the Art of War, the oldest military treatise in the world, translated from the Chinese by Lionel Giles, 1910, which can be accessed at chinapage.com slash sunzi, S-U-N-Z-I, hyphen e dot html. The principle of the five elements that appears in the final scroll of the Shonin Ki has its origin in what is referred to in Chinese as Wu Xing, an abbreviated form of Wu Zhong Liu Xing Zhi Che, meaning the five types of qi that are dominant at different times. The curves that make up the circle connecting the five elements represent the cycle of generation, inyo sosei in Japanese. Wood produces fire as the log burns. 
Fire produces earth in the form of powdered ash. Earth produces metal, as mineral extracts are formed in the soil. Metal produces water by liquefying when it is melted, and water produces wood by causing trees and other vegetation to grow. In the same figure, the straight lines form the star connecting the five elements, representing the cycle of destruction or domination. In yo sokiko in Japanese. Water extinguishes fire. Fire melts metal. Metal cuts wood. Wood covers the earth by growing in the form of trees, and the earth absorbs water. In addition to this, there is a large play of rich symbolic correspondences between the Chinese wuxing and the five fundamental emotions, the five yang organs of the human body, the five senses, the five stages of life, the five seasons of the year for the Chinese, the times of the day, the five animals of Shaolin Kung Fu, or therapeutic Qi Gong, the sounds, the colors, and so on. Engendered by the ancient I Ching, the Book of Changes, the Wuxing was developed in China around the end of the 5th century CE. It next moved into Japan where it took the name of Gogyo. In tandem with the Gogyo that emerged out of Chinese Taoism, Buddhism crafted its own version of the Five Elements Principle, the Godai, with several variations and adaptations. The Buddhist Godai is slightly distinguished from the Chinese Wuxing and the Japanese Gogyo by the fact that the elements of wood and metal are replaced by the void, or the wind, or air, depending on the variant version. Its cycle also begins with the element earth in contrast to Gogyo, which is systematically opens with the element wood. Godai was later incorporated by the esoteric branch of Buddhism in Japan during the 10th century CE under the name of Gorin, the five wheels or the five rings. From there, Godai and Gorin eventually moved into ninjutsu, where this principle of the five elements became an essential aspect of the esoteric ninja teaching, the Ninpo Mikkyo. The influence of the five elements on combat techniques. At a primary level, the five wheels gave structure to all the ninja combat techniques. The majority of Japanese martial arts, especially samurai training, were based on a collective mass teaching in which the student received ex extensive drilling in a combat technique that basically remained foreign to his personality. Ninjutsu used the opposite approach. The students were given individual instruction taught in very small groups in a way that followed their natural inclinations. Consequently, there were no pre-established pre technical programs or katas. Instead, combat techniques, both armed and weaponless, defensive and offensive moves, positions, and so on, were simply classified into pro broad categories coded by one of the five natural elements as a symbol of certain techniques, such as fire for offensive and explosive, water for defensive and fluid, and so on. These techniques were adopted by an individual ninja during combat based on circumstances, his morphology, his state of mind at the time, and the adversary he was facing. The apprentice ninja was therefore not expected to learn all the movements in each category, but simply to select over the course of his training the defensive and offensive moves that were most instinctive for him, and which best responded to his nature. This guaranteed that the acquisition and development of his fighting technique would be as specifically personal and available as his own personality. As a result, his technique would always be unpredictable. This variation of technique from one ninja to the next offered no reference point for an adversary that would allow him to identify a particular style, therefore making it more difficult for him to perfect any counter techniques. This is the reason that the style of ninja combat frequently gave observers the characteristic impression of a certain national, uh, natural dynamic. Recognizable here is the libertarian mentality of the ninja arts in its origins, underscoring individuality, in contrast to the hierarchical respect of the caste so distinctive of the samurai, and ensuring that the system adapted to the student instead of obliging the student to conform to a system. On a strategic level, Gogyo or Gorin also helped to classify the techniques of evasion, known as inton, camouflage, and flight, which were known as gotonpo.
Hiding oneself thanks to the earth was known as Doton Jutsu. Whether hiding behind a rock or in a camouflaged ditch or crevice in the rock, or covering oneself with a thin layer of dirt. Other concealment techniques were also classified in accordance with the elements. Hiding thanks to wood or Mokutonjutsu. Climbing and concealing oneself in the trees, hiding behind bushes, or crawling through the grass and so on. Hiding by virtue of water or Suetonjutsu. Hiding thanks to fire or Katonjutsu. Using smoke bombs, starting a fire to create a diversion and so on. Hiding thanks to metal, or kintonjutsu, creating a diversion by throwing metal objects whose noise diverts a sentry's attention, throwing cow traps to hamper the progress of a pursuer when making an escape, using various ordinary objects made of metal to hide oneself, and so forth. In the first scroll of the Shonen Ki, the chapter dedicated to the Meditations on Water Birds makes an allusion to this pr principle of adapting and merging with the elements in order to hide. Quote, spying means blending in with the widest variety of things, and in this way concealing yourself skillfully and with art. The Five Elements in Meditation Finally, on the spiritual and esoteric level, Gorian played an important role in meditation techniques. Each element represented a type of energy or state of mind. In the performance of mudras, magic gestures made with fingers, each of the Five fingers corresponded with one of the elements. In order from the little finger to the thumb, earth, water, fire, wind, and the void. We should also note that the five magical spells mentioned in chapter 5 of the middle scroll also arose from this Chinese five elements principle. The Shonen Ki relies on other forms of traditional knowledge as well, such as face reading, astrology, and traditional astronomy. Chapters 9 and 10 of the Middle Scroll of the Shonen Ki are dedicated to physiognomy, the art of reading the personality and destiny of a person through their outer appearance, particularly their facial features. This doctrine seems to have held a very large influence in medieval Japan. Some of the details of this doctrine may appear naive or comical to many modern readers, but do not be too quick to laugh. We should recall that during the same time period in Europe, numerous Western grimoires like the Greater Little Albert often provided similar treatises on physiognomy which were frequently inspired by older treatises written by Greek and Roman authors. Without them, the physiognomic doctrine and its derivatives like phrenology would never have enjoyed such success in 19th century Europe as demonstrated by the popularity of such books as Johann Kaspar Lavater's The Art of Knowing Men Through Physiognomy, published in 1820, and Cesare Lombroso's The Criminal Man, published in 1887. During the Edo era, a physiognomy book of Chinese origin, the Nanboku Sobo, enjoyed great and widespread success in Japan. This work distinguishes between three parts of the face, the upper part related to intelligence in the first years of life, the middle part related to feelings and maturity, and finally the lower part which refers to instincts and the end of life. Although these distinctions established by the Nanboku Sobo do not correspond exactly with those in the Shonen Ki, it seems to have had some influence on the writing of the latter book. Incidentally, the conclusion of chapter 10 of the middle scroll of the Shonen Ki tempers and takes a certain distance from the precepts of face reading. Quote, the purpose of these notes is to draw up an inventory of characteristics bestowed by birth, yet sometimes mistakes have been made. Although, for example, a person's character may appear completely evil, it can happen that he has some good aspects and should not be stigmatized because of some bad character features. Predicting the good and evil in an individual is a difficult undertaking that must be approached with finesse. What should be held most firmly in mind from these chapters is the principle explained in their introduction. There are methods for observing people that will allow you to indubitably recognize how they think as well as their character. It is said that the self listens to the heart attentively, so observing their heart, so observing the heart allows you to see and read that of the other like your own image in a mirror. He whose heart is not serene can quickly fall victim to others. This is why the shinobi used says this technique and is able to follow his adversary's heart anywhere and penetrate it. 
In fact, the short treatise on physiognomy that brings the middle scroll to a close is but a preliminary sketch introducing the final scroll of the Shoninki which develops the techniques of observation far more extensively. The Shoninki suggests the existence of a connection between Ninja and Yamabushi, also known as Shugenja, Genja, or Genza. The Yamabushi were first and foremost dissident mystics, who lived in the mountains for the most part, which earned them their name. Yamabushi is written in Japanese as Yama Fusu, while most Western books translated as Warrior or Bushi of the Mountains, or Yama, this is not at all correct. To be exact, Yamabushi actually means those who prostrate themselves, or those who lie down, on the mountain. While Yama does, not, does in fact mean mountain, the mistake in the standard translation stems from the verb of fusu, which means to prostrate oneself, hide, or lie down. The noun der derived from fusu is fushi, when it occurs as the second half of a compound word formed with yama, the F sound is turned into a B sound, thus creating yamabushi, which is written differently. To confuse things even more, the word yamabushi is very close phonetically to yamaboshi, or yamahoshi, used to designate warrior monks, the monks or hoshi of the mountain. These monks were the Buddhist monks of Mount Hiei, more specifically those of Enryakuji Temple, located on the mountain. These monk warriors were customarily called Hoshi Musha, monk warriors, Akuso, formidable or ferocious monks, or even in the historical texts written during the Edo period, Sohei, soldier monks. Actually, the Yamabushi were, adept, were adepts of the esoteric doctrines of Buddhism, such as Shingon or Tendai, and practitioners of Shugendo, the path of practical exercises for obtaining psychic powers. Folk tradition cast them in the role of powerful magicians, and the keepers of occult traditions who were endowed with supernatural powers. They sought to acquire these powers through ascetic practices and meditation, as well as sometimes through the martial arts. They were often identified with the Tengu, mountain spirits who are half man and half crow, either serving as their privileged intermediaries, or simply considered to be one and the same. Greatly influenced by its initial cohabitation with the Yamabushi, Ninjutsu is rich with numerous magical elements and practices whose purpose is the acquisition of psychic powers. While the influence of Shugendo on ninjutsu is still controversial, it is certain that the first ninja communities partially integrated elements from Buddhism's esoteric legacy as the Shoninki mentions. The esoteric teaching of the ninja, Ninpo Mikkyo, mainly consists of the practice of mantras, the vocalization of magic words and sounds, and mudras, magic gestures. The Shoninki devotes the fifth chapter of the Middle Scroll, Secret Teachings for Sowing Dismay and Assassins, to these practices. The five columns of symbols cited by the Shoninki in Secret Teachings for, showing, for Sowing Dismay and Assassins, on page 98, are magic spells. It should be noted that some of these signs do not exist in the Japanese common tongue. Their adaptations of magic Chinese spells out of the Wuxing and Taoism. As indicated in the accompanying text, the first two spells are more akin to charms for blessing and protection, while the other three are curses to be directed toward a potential foe. The Shoninki makes no mention of this, but for good measure the ultimate implementation of these symbols is to write the magic spells with your own blood. It may also be noted that Four of the spells all share the concluding phrase Kyukyu nyo Ritsuryo, which was used in the Han Dynasty in all official documents, as well as in Taoist magic spells. It means, may my command be carried out at once. In Japan, this phrase was used by the Yamabushi during exorcism rites or for divinatory purposes when seeking to predict the outcome of a battle or to determine the most propitious day for victory. It was also used to dispel evil spirits before a battle. We should, know, we should also note the presence in three of this, these spells of a symbol depicting a nine-line grid referring to the magic number nine, mainly that of the Ninpo Kujigo Shinho. 
a specific sequence of nine different ways of interlacing the fingers, each accompanied by a specific mantra. There are a large number of such mudras, magic gestures formed by the fingers, used for a wide variety of purposes. For example, as a complement to their training of Ankoku, let's see, Ankoku Toshijutsu, techniques for seeing in the night. There is a mudra spell that was specifically intended to let its caster see better in the dark. Naturally reserved for the ninja initiates, all these magic elements were unknown to common mortals as stipulated by the Shoninki. We can also find more specifically Buddhist and even Zen teachings in this book. For example, in the 8th chapter of the Middle School, it is explained that it is necessary to be empty, in other words, impartial and freed from the ego with complete absence of self-attachment. As a ninja was adept at worming information from an adversary by flattering his vanity and stroking his ego, if he was himself liberated from this weakness, he would be that much more effective. Quote, this is why it is so important to be able to leave your ego to the side. I've mentioned some of the traditional and esoteric elements found in ninjutsu for the reason that so few readers are aware of them, but their role in the shoninki should not be overestimated. This book is first and foremost a collection of practical techniques, techniques for gathering information, the use of various materials, gaining knowledge of the environment, and so forth, as well as an explication of the psychological and spiritual aspects that the authentic art of ninjutsu assumes will be employed in the implementation of these techniques. On the broadest scale, ninjutsu shares the same fundamental goal of Zen Buddhism and the majority of the traditional martial arts. Quote, struggle against the ego in order to obtain awakening as well as a state of inner emptiness, the source of superior effectiveness. Axel Mazue. Shoninki, Part 1, Shoninki Jo, Introduction to the Shoninki. Forward. This book is an examination of the ancient traditions of ninjutsu and the art of the shinobi, which has long existed. More than that, it is a practical manual for military experts, discussing attack and retreat, advantage and disadvantage. The strategies presented in great depth here are both the gate and the key. Every warrior should carefully learn them and become immersed in these precepts. Thanks to this knowledge, it is possible to assume a position of dominance during dangerous times when reality can be turned upside down with a snap of a finger. Nothing is too difficult for the warrior who employs these strategies, even when he is subject to interrogation by enemy soldiers. He will be able to escape them even if he is not a particularly distinguished soldier by relying on strategies that are centered on the possession of an unflappable heart. It is for this reason that people who are too young should not be recruited. If such people are chosen, it is as if you are replenishing your enemy's forces with your own soldiers. It is like giving food to a thief. This is why it is very important to be quite judicious in the selection of your people. By using the secret methods of ninjutsu, such as those written about by Fuji Nois Shueshi Masataki, it is possible to confidently take advantage of a skilled warrior versed in numerous arts. Similarly, you can easily draw up a plan against the enemy who guides his life using his own rudder. These resemble the strategies of the Yamabushi who conceal themselves in the night. This book itself was once completed and published by hidden and scarcely visible means. Although the knowledge of ninjutsu may appear superficial and contradictory, it is far from being so. I am merely someone who has extended one part of the path, so it now seems unnecessary for me to waste any more time speaking on this subject. Katsura, civil servant of Kishu province, written during the ninth year of the Enpo era. This would be 1681 as the Enpo era lasted nine years from 1673 to 1681, during the waxing moon at the beginning of autumn. Chapter 1. The Authentic Ninja Tradition of Our School Toryu Shoninki Although ninjutsu has existed in Japan since ancient times, it was revealed openly for the first time during the Genpei War. 
The Genpei War was an important civil war in Japan that lasted from 1180 to 1185. It owes its name to the counteraction, to the contraction of the name of its two opponents, the Minamoto or Genji, and the Taira or Heiki. It ended with the victory of the Minamoto clan. Minamoto no Kuro Yoshitsune was one of this clan's most famous warriors. As it happens, this soldier was reputed to possess ninja teachings. It has also been established that, that his most faithful companion, Saito Musashi Bobenkei, was a Yamabushi. During the Genpei War, when Minamoto no Kuro Yoshitsune selected valiant warriors to employ during the Battle of Shinobi, during the Kenmu era, ninjutsu was used countless times by Kusunoki Masashige. Also known as the Kenmu Restoration, this period encompasses the years 1333 to 1336. Kusunoki Masashige was a samurai who lived from 1294 to 1336 and fought for the Emperor Go Daigo during this period. Among recent generations, Hojo Ujiasu, Lord Hojo Ujiasu's third representative of the Hojo clan, lived from 1515 to 1571. Hojo Ujiasu employed the Nusubito Kazama. Kazama is the name of Fuma Kotaro, a ninja from the Fuma clan who worked for the Hojo clan. The exact dates of his birth and death are unknown. Kazama, to go to different spots in various provinces and investigate certain mat matters. Takeda Shingen of Kai province. Takeda Shingen, lord of Shinano and Kai provinces, lived from 1521 to 1573. Like Hojo Ujiasu, he was one of the principal lords fighting for control over Japan during the 16th century. Takeda Shingen of Kai province employed people called Supa. These individuals were also Nusubito of this province. Eventually, this knowledge reached the Koka and Iga regions. From there, ninjutsu next expanded into other provinces until it became known throughout the country. As members of this group, we have exchanged a promise of universal scope. This is why we lend our assistance when a shinobi comes from another province. This promise of mutual aid was only valid between members of the Kishiryu clan who had swarmed across the land. As a general rule, the, fero the ferocious rivalry and quarrels between the different ninja clans and more widely the various martial arts schools were proverbial. If I, meet another, if I visit another province, the person living in that area will show me his province. If this person visits my province, I will show him the secrets of the area and reveal to him the secrets of my house, thereby putting this marvelous doctrine of this method to work. May the value of this art be recognized. However, as different generations who meet do not recognize each other with certainty, there is only a single torch inside our house. It seems that this torch of the Kishu school is nothing other than the Shonen Ki, or at least the oral teachings recorded in it. If anyone is seeking to prove his identity, let him brandish this torch, and all doubts shall be dispelled. Furthermore, the Shonen Ki is a ninja tradition archive and a family secret. In order to help the expansion of ninjutsu, this generation shall become the transmission center for several shinobi families. Today the ninja tradition is passed on through the shonin ki. Although similar archives exist in other areas, this tradition is the true path of a shinobi from our school. 2. The different types of spies. Shinobi no Tsuamono no Shina. The designation of five kinds of spies, local agents, interior agents, double agents, sacrificed agents, and reusable agents, came from China and has been continued in Japan where the word gokan or tokan is used to describe them. The principle remains the same whatever term is used. He who can penetrate the essence of these different types and act independently is called a shinobi. When two or three act together as a group, they are called sonin. Today, inexperienced young people are employed in groups of two or three, but this is not satisfactory. Caution is advisable when dealing with anyone who is not a specialist. It is preferable, even among experienced warriors, to allow them to operate individually because there have been problems in the past with shinobi working as a group. 
Knowing how to direct an army takes great skill. It is said that the shinobi originated in China and that their art was first revealed during the reign of the Yellow Emperor. This was the Chinese Emperor Huangdi, known as Kotei in Japan, said to have reigned from 2967 to 2598 BCE, according to Sima Qian's historical memoirs. In China, he is one of the five mythical emperors of antiquity and is considered to be a father of Chinese civilization. In an old Chinese scripture, Sa Den, this refers to a classic Chinese text, the Zuo Zhuan, or Chu Qing Zuo Shi Zhuan, Master Zuo's commentary on the annals of spring and fall of Lu, written by Zhuo Qiuming. It takes the form of a commentary on the Chong Qiu, the Chong Qiu, the chronicle of the state of Lu, today the province of Shandong, attributed to Confucius. This text describes the events occurring in the state between 722 and 481 BCE. However, the Zuo Zhuang goes beyond mere commentary to depict a longer historical period than the Chun Qiu until 468 BCE. In Japanese, this tra the translation of this book is known as the Saden or the Senju Sahiden. The shinobi were called Cho, later they were also called Saisaku. Tradition maintains that a person in the service of the king of To secretly introduced himself into the home of the king of Jo and killed him. Concerning this individual in the king of To's service, tradition maintains that it was Yi Ji, better known as Yi Yin, who worked for Qing Tang, founder of the Shang dynasty. There is apparently some confusion on the part of the Japanese author of the Shoninki concerning the assassination of the king of Jo. Historically, the king of Jo designates the emperor Chu or Zhao Xin of the Shang Dynasty, but it was Emperor Ketsu, uh, the king of Jie, Jie Gui, the very last emperor of the Ka or Xia Dynasty, who was murdered for the benefit of Cheng Tang. One interesting thing about this case of mistaken identity, though, is that both these Chinese emperors were renowned for their cruelty. It is also said that Son Bu, this is to say Sun Wu, who has come down to posterity under the name, the name of Sun Tzu, or Sun Zi, author of The Art of War. Sun Bu, a servitor of the King of Wu, employed five different kinds of information gathering agents for planning an attack against the enemy. The five types of Chinese spies are local agents, in Kono Khan. These are trustworthy individuals able to speak the enemy's language who gather information by carefully eavesdropping on conversations. They resemble the Japanese Dakonin. As mentioned earlier, Dako is the name of, for ninja in the provinces of Yamashiro and Yamato. Interior Agents Nairyo no Kan. These are interior bureaucrats who can be won to your cause. Their work is of great importance. Because the enemy also employs officials like this, it is important to clearly master the recruitment and use of false spies. This method is also used in Japan, so discretion and caution are constantly required. Double Agents Hantoku no Kan these are, agents, these are enemy agents that are used like your own agents. These enemy shinobi are treated magnificently like friends. In Japan, they are known as Kairinin or Sorinin. If a deeply planted individual of this type is provided with false information, he or she will spread it wherever possible. They can be counted on to see that this information soon becomes common knowledge. The means by which the, the intention of these agents are penetrated is only transmitted orally, or okuden. Don't worry, it's also recorded in Bansen Shukai and in the uh, scrolls of Shikamatsu Shigenori, which we'll be reading eventually. Sacrificed Agents The corresponding kanji means death. Given the context, the term sacrifice seems to be an appropriate and correct translation. This technique of using sacrificed agents formed part of ninjutsu under the name of Hotaru Binojutsu. A variation of this technique was called Tensoi no Jutsu. This came into play when an adversary ninja was unmasked but not arrested. Instead, he was supplied with false or useless information that would serve to lead his master astray. Shichon no Kan 
These are people who feel very grateful towards you and to whom you give useless information. Reusable agents, Tensei no Kai. These are individuals capable of easily entering enemy territory secretly and who always return with information. To easily gain access to the, to the desired information about a targeted province, the technique of talking to the local residents, or Kyodo, is used. The best thing is to make friends with the local inhabitants and maintain contact with the common folk. It is also possible to interrogate the inhabitants of the villages when venturing into unknown territories. It is said in this regard that long ago Sasaki Saburo Moritsuna interrogated two men who lived near a cove and they told him about a shallow spot where he could cross the river. He gave them a Shirasayamaki sword to express his gratitude. This technique is known as employing Kyodo. The use of listening posts, Gaibun or Sotogaki. This method consists of having people outside the enemy territory collect important information without sending them to infiltrate deeply into the region. It is possible to obtain information about an enemy territory without even entering it, simply by listening carefully. While using this method, it is extremely important to not trust false rumors and to be quite capable of evaluating people correctly, as well as properly analyzing the information co collected. The ninja, or shinobi no mono. Ninja is the Japanese variant of janje, or kanja. A shinobi operates by night or day, and never complains of any hardships. He resembles a nusubito, but a shinobi does not steal. Individuals like this, who easily gather information in even hard-to-reach places and can make their way back without problem from even roadless territories, are masters of the art of espionage. They possess the most highly developed skills. Thieves, nusubito. Nusubito are devoid of all moral standards and incapable of distinguishing right from wrong. They are indiscreet. For example, like predatory individuals hunting game, they scorn all the boundaries erected by games keepers to, present, to protect certain reserves, and they show no respect for life when they steal from a place. They should be considered as no more than individuals who possess petty skills. 3. The Supreme Principles of the Art of Shinobi Ichiru no Shidai The Master says, The work of a shinobi takes him to the very borders of what an individual can tolerate, and it is only by exerting much effort that he is able to support it. These highly skilled individuals have to bear in mind when leaving their homes that they will never see those they love or their children again. Whoever returns home can rejoice for escaping his destiny. The shinobi places his heart beneath the blade of a sword. See introduction, page 5. Similarly, while many people believe that ninjutsu depends on magic, this is not exactly true. Ninjutsu is a practical art and not the imposture of a charlatan. This is when the disciple asks, if one listens to the wind blowing, he hears that the art of the shinobi allows him to travel through inaccessible provinces and to soar over frontiers and customs posts that cannot be crossed. He hears that fathers and brothers are no longer able to recognize their own relatives who have become shinobi. Couldn't the use of this art, such as when a man, for example, is convinced that someone is standing right in front of him, then suddenly feels the presence of someone at his back, only to turn and see that what he sensed has vanished? Be compared to a mysterious rarity linked to no other tradition. Isn't this the art of practicing complete self-effacement when approaching people to glean information from them? The master answers, If a person follows a crude, a crude principle in an art of little refinement, then that person shall surely make mistakes. But the correct path is marvelous. There are times when a shinobi recognizes reality within his heart, wraps it in a cloak of illusion, or non-reality, and presents it as reality. An experienced shinobi will recognize when an adversary is using the same principle and recognize the reality of the illusion. When necessary, the shinobi will be able to speak the language of a province. He will be able to speak enthusiastically about a place's quality of life, make friends of the inhabitants of a foreign location, and obtain things without spending much money. He will be able to get what he needs to eat and drink and not become drunk. 
Similarly, the art of the shinobi consists of learning tricks that can be used at critical moments, such as being able to disguise himself as a priest, a wandering monk, a woman, or a girl of the mountains, and hidden in the night perform espionage. He should not come down to stay in inns, but sleep in open fields with no fear of wild animals in rut. Or else he should be able to flee into the depths of the forest, using only the clarity offered by the wonderful light of the moon. The shinobi feels a certain kind of sorrow because of what he has to face and the tricks he uses, but this is something he should never reveal to anyone. There's nothing extraordinary in all of this, and the person questioned about it by ordinary folk answers that he is just as ordinary and nothing more. But this is also part of the shinobi's strategy. The illusion that has become reality belongs to the real. A shinobi should achieve his goal at the price of hard work, and if at times he strays along the way or his duty blinds his heart, he should never forget the principle of our school. So as you can see, there are a few inaccuracies in the uh, introduction and the foreword. There are also some inaccuracies in the footnotes. But you can do your own research and take them with a grain of salt where they're false and accept them where they're true. The translations themselves, as far as I'm aware, may not be perfect, but they are relatively sound. Sound enough anyway. And hopefully they will be of use to you all. Next time we will be reading... Uh, we'll be reading an excerpt from Bansen Shukai, which is the uh, manual mentioned in this book. Then after that, we'll be reading an excerpt from uh, Iga and Koka Ninja Skills, a production of the Historical Ninjutsu Research Team, translated by Yoshie Minami. After that, we'll be reading an excerpt out of the book Sacred Conspiracy, published, uh, or rather, brought to publication by Stephen Nojiri, which is supposed to include a translation of the Fukushima Ryu Shinobi no Maki. Most of it is magic, but there are some tools in there and uh, principles in there that may be of use. And of course, finally, we'll be doing a chapter of the Batman Handbook and How to Be a Superhero by The Knight Rider. My only problem with the Batman Handbook is that the Batman Handbook seems to be off in terms of the combat section. But you can certainly look up material on military combatives to supplement what they tell you. Black Scout Survival also has a lot of information about uh, survival skills, social engineering, and a couple videos on uh, combat skills. Uh, How to Be a Superhero by the Knight Rider is an old book that does contain a lot of uh, kind of woo-woo new age feel to it but it's still full of useful information and practical examples and all of this is being and uh, the material by Stephen Nojiri according to some is uh, an amateur translation one that uh, was made using Google Translate for whatever that's worth but the material in it seems to come from legitimate resources so it may be of use to you like I said a lot of it is magic based and so it won't be of much use to you at all except for the psychological component in magic but a lot of it is uh, related to the various tools that are used and we can always find modern-day equivalents and you can look up online how to make them if you don't have them 
you know, really cheap do-it-yourself type stuff that'll be of use to you in a variety of survival situations. The point is to learn everything, all you can, because you ultimately have the power. You ultimately are the power. And that is the message by which we will end these videos. This is Any Man reminding you that you are the power. Use it wisely and use it well.